we declare this morning hallelujah of your faithfulness we declare that you are Jehovah Jireh you are Eliho hallelujah we thank you that you are the Prince of Peace we thank you that this year in 2022 will be a bountiful year a prosperous year a favor filled year Lord open the doors oh God hallelujah and fill your room fill this room with your presence oh God hallelujah Lord speak to us this morning in Jesus name we pray we all shouted a big amen say amen big amen you may be seated in God's presence hallelujah, hallelujah. praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord Greetings to all of you in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, thank you all for joining us this Sunday morning. Welcome to our English service. Uh, it's going to end at 1045 because of the general body we have. So I want all of us to pay attention, receive the word with an open heart. Um, God is going to speak to each one of us. How many believe that God will speak from his word? Say amen. God will speak from his word. Amen. Amen. I want you to open your Bibles to Isaiah 60 verse 18 and 19 Isaiah 60 verse 18 and 19 for this reading Ria will help me read this morning no longer will violence be heard in your land nor ruin or destruction within your borders but you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise the sun will no more be your light by day nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you for the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God, and your God will be your glory no longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders, but you will call your walls what? Say it. You will call your walls what? You will call your walls what? Come on, a little bit louder. You will call your walls and your gates, hallelujah, and your gates, and your gates, and, this, and it says, for the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Say this with me. And your God will be your, your God will be your. I want to talk to you from this subject. May God be our glory in these strange times. May God be our glory in these strange times. This is from our series, Rise Up, Build and Shine. May God be our glory in these strange times. Say amen. Say amen. A famous philosopher, Plato, once said, Strange times are these in which we live, where old and young are taught falsehoods in schools. And the person that dares to tell the truth is called a lunatic and a fool. Isn't it true that we live in some strange times? Even sharing the word with someone, even sharing the truth with someone, they will call you a lunatic. Sometimes they will call you strange. They will call you dangerous. They will call you unpredictable just because of sharing the truth. Listen church, we live in some strange times where we see a lot of gender confusion in teens. A lot of gender confusion in teens. 12 through 19 years of age is where they are faced with identity crisis and role confusion stage. This is where young people are confused about their identity, number one. Number two, their role in society. Number three, there's, and their social circle, they want to belong, and even their gender. Um, there's a theory by Eric uh, Erickson that parents will soon start to see some signs. Number one, you'll see signs of feelings of uncertainty about their gender preference. Number two, parents, you will see signs of, of these children start to wear clothes different from their gender.
you will see signs like they appear to be anxious in social situations because of the fear of being bullied. You will see signs of them not wanting to participate in gender specific activities. Soon you will see signs of depression and self-harm and suicidal thoughts because of gender confusion. And children, if you're going through any of these things, first person you need to talk is to your parents why hide there's you know you can only hide so much no one in the world will understand more than your parents and if you're afraid to go to your parents you can talk to a guidance counselor in school and if you're afraid to do that you can come talk to us pastors have a seat with us we will have a dinner together share with us how you feel we definitely in the coming months what we want to do is we want to put together Together a seminar, a workshop uh, to talk about the specific struggles that you know we may all see. You know, maybe in our walks with Christ, or maybe with your friends. We want to find a specific uh, teacher and, and and a speaker on that. And we'll invite them. Let me tell you, church, fifty percent of the success is us coming into a building, gathering together, and hearing a seminar. Also taking part of a workshop. So I'm inviting not only the students, I'm inviting parents as well. Because we all see this type of situations in high schools and junior high. And we as a church need to be better equipped. Amen? We as a church need to be better equipped. So, equipped. so we as pastors, we're, we're uh, actually searching for the right uh, person to come in. And when we uh, put together these programs, I want the parents and, their, and your students and your children to come together. Hallelujah. Because I believe Hosea 4, 6 says, My people perish because of lack of knowledge. God never intended us to be that way. Which is why God gave us his eternal word. Amen. And Bible clearly says in these last days, hallelujah, your faith will be tested. So we need to be better equipped. We need to pray for our church and our families. We also want to put together a marriage seminar for good marriages, great marriages, and not so great marriages. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, church, keeping your family together is your number one ministry in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. If you believe with me, say amen. Keeping your family and your churches together, your children together is our number one ministry. If you believe that, say amen to Jesus. Say amen to Jesus. Hallelujah. As we go into Isaiah 60 for today's meditation, like many churches, the Jerusalem community lived with an everyday experience that fell short of God's promises. And when we look back into the three chapters, Isaiah 56 through 59, had focused on what the community needed to do in a situation where they expected God to move. Hallelujah. I want us to understand as a church and as a body of Christ, our faith is not merely an acknowledgement of a doctrinal truth, but it is to be a lifestyle of obedience to the Lord and seeking to learn what is pleasing to the Lord and doing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Too often we as believers live in a narrow self-serving lives that contradict the basis of what we believe. To see this, I look back and reflect on Jesus' mockery of the Pharisee of his day. When we think about that, the Pharisees had the strictest view of keeping the law. They ended up with legalism and self-serving hypocrisy that caused people to turn away from God. Let me tell you church, we are living in a legalistic society. What does that mean? Putting law above the gospel. I want us to be under I want you to understand this. America is a legalistic country. Legalists believe that people were driven by self-interest. In the same way, the Pharisees were driven by self-interest. In the same way, in 2022, 
people around the world are driven by self-interest. Hallelujah. Listen, when we look at the Pharisee's life, the Pharisees prioritize the Torah, the Pentateuch or the law, which comprises of the five books of the Bible over the prophets inside. Hallelujah. What we see in the life of, of these Pharisees, they were more interested in the, in the laws of the book. Hallelujah. Yet they despise the prophets inside. I want you to listen carefully. There they should have studied. They should have read Isaiah 56 through 59 more carefully because it talks about what the community needed to do if they wanted God to act. Say amen. Hallelujah. In the next three chapters as we study this from Isaiah 60 through 63, it talks about God's promises to do God promises to do hallelujah what are the promises of God as we study the history in 589 BC Jerusalem was devastated when King Nebuchadnezzar laid siege to Jerusalem people were uh, under the enslavement of Babylonian rule we, we see in the scripture Solomon's temple was destroyed and many Jews fled to the surroundings, the, the Moab, the Em, and the Eden, uh, and the other countries to seek refuge. The Bible declares the city was enduring deprivation during the siege. Hallelujah. And the Bible clearly states that the siege uh, lasted 18 to 30 months. Can you tell me how many months has it been since the corona pandemic outbreak started? If we look back from December 29th all the way to this month, it's been 26 months of devastation and deaths. Hallelujah. Let me move forward. Then in Isaiah it says, in the 11th year of Zechariah's reign, King Nebuchadnezzar broke through the walls of Jerusalem. He broke through Jerusalem walls. And that's why the Isaiah prophet spoke in the midst of such dire situation, in the midst of such dire warnings, the Holy Spirit inspired a message of hope for the people, for the future of God's holy city. Let me tell you, even in the midst of, of January 2022, God can inspire a message, hallelujah, to give us a hope, hallelujah. He's not going to leave us alone during this pandemic and this devastation that is happening. How many believe that God's promises are yes and amen? Hallelujah. God's promises are yes and amen. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. So here what we see is that prophet Isaiah shared a message, a prophetic message. In Isaiah 60 verse 18 says, Violence shall no more be heard in your land nor destruction or devastation within your borders. You shall call your walls salvation and your gates praise. The Hebrew word that is translated salvation is Yisha. Yisha means relief, a relief. I really believe that God is going to send a mighty relief to the body of Christ. To our nations. Yisha means relief. Relief in the sense of being rescued from an enemy. Relief in the sense of being rescued from trouble. Relief in the sense of being rescued from illness. Basically God promised that at some point in the future. Through prophet Isaiah he spoke. That people would be protected not by the walls of stone and brick that people build. That people will be protected by the walls of salvation. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know if you understand this. That we will be protected by the walls of salvation. Glory to God. And I want you to understand what is salvation. What is salvation? What is salvation? Salvation is the gracious work of God. Where he delivers undeserving gospel believing sinners from sin. And bring them into right and vital relationship with himself. And grants them his grace. And how many of us Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. We want the grace of God. Hallelujah. Even in these strange times, may God be your glory in these strange times. Lord, let Lord shine your light upon the body of Christ. Lord, hallelujah. People are going through such confusion and anxiety, such guilt. Hallelujah. They're going through, hallelujah, problems after problems. But today the word of the Lord is saying, hallelujah, I'm going to send a wall, the walls of salvation and the gates be praised. Hallelujah. How many of you understand? Hallelujah. And say thank you, Jesus, that we are so grateful for the salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. We're so grateful to praise and worship the almighty God. Hallelujah. Would you put your hands together and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. May God be our glory in these strange times. May God be our glory in these strange times. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me move forward. Isaiah prophesied a deliverer would come, would arise. To do what? To bring good news to the people. To good news to the poor. And to bind up their brokenhearted. And proclaim liberty to the captives. My first point to you today is this. Number one. Be rebuilt and resurrected in Christ. Instead of humiliation, a double portion be served. A double portion of deliverance, a double portion of prosperity, a double portion of liberty be come upon the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah prophesied, even the ancient ruins will be built up. Hallelujah. Former devastation will be raised up and the wealth of the nation would arrive. Hallelujah. And instead of shame, there would be a double portion of deliverance, prosperity and liberty. Say amen to that. Say this with me, be rebuilt and resurrected in Christ. A double portion be served. Let deliverance, prosperity, and liberty. Isaiah prophesied in the midst of such devastation that Jerusalem was facing and he prophesied a, a, a message of hope. The ancient ruins will be rebuilt. Hallelujah. Previous devastation would be resurrected. Wealth and of the other nation would come into your lap. And instead of humiliation, let there be a double portion be served. Deliverance, prosperity, and liberty. Let me tell you, church, hallelujah. God stakes his reputation on his promise. Hallelujah. Even, your, even the government cannot make that kind of promise. But the Lord Jesus will make a promise. And when he makes a promise, he surely will able to deliver it. Hallelujah. How many of you are grateful that I serve a God, that we serve a God, hallelujah, he is able to deliver his promise hallelujah hallelujah that his glory alone is what makes us compelling hallelujah what is this glory given for for the benefit of the righteous let your glory shine upon the body of Christ oh God Lord uh, we want to experience the glory the light of God Lord that's what's going to make us compelling oh Lord Jesus hallelujah 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 Shall, would you just open your mouth and praise God today Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are sitting in the, in the midst of Jesus. Jesus is present in the temple of God. Oh no, oh no, open your mouth. Can you just open your mouth? Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Open your mouth, open your mouth, hallelujah. Kevin, I want you to just give me a little bit more on the monitor. Oh, I thank you that Lord, hallelujah. Lord, give us fresh vision. Give us the anointing of God. Lord, we want to see the glory of God shine upon the people. Just like Isaiah prophesied. Let the glory of God be seen upon you hallelujah oh thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Lord we need your presence oh God we need your presence of God we need the presence of God hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus hallelujah 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 we glorify your name Jesus hallelujah just like Isaiah Isaiah's message was spiritual hallelujah 
The New Testament tells us that through the conversion to Christ, we have come to Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, which means we have joined a spiritual culture. Church, when we are in the presence of God, I want us to understand that we are in the presence of the Almighty God. I pray that you give him your total focus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even though you're hearing a message from the pastors. Hallelujah. There are mysteries that the Lord is speaking to each one of you differently. The way that the message speaks to you, Gina, would be different than it would speak to Resin. Hallelujah. So as you meditate and focus on God's word, God will begin to endow the mysteries of the gospel. Hallelujah. And every distraction will be canceled in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah I want us to understand that we are in the spiritual atmosphere that we are when we are in the spiritual atmosphere I want you to catch the revelation of God Lord endow on us the glory of God hallelujah what America needs what churches need is the presence of Jesus amen hallelujah amen hallelujah amen 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 so we here see that we have joined a spiritual culture Hallelujah. And the first point that I made to you is, I want us to take a minute this year. I, I want to propose to our youth and young adults. I want you to fast two times a month. Find some time, youth and young adults, to fast and pray two times a month. When I was your age, I was fasting every Wednesday. That inspired, that, that helped me grow spiritually. Amen. So I want you to understand and take some time. Lord, I want to make a resolution that I can commit to. Two times a month, I want to fast and pray. And Lord, whatever you have to speak to me, I want you to speak to me. And as you pray, I want you to pray for the pastors. Hallelujah. Pray for the pastors that God, that we would bring messages. Hallelujah. And revelations of God that will edify the entire church. Amen. There are four-year-olds and five-year-olds. There are 10-year-olds. There are 20-year-olds. There are 30-year-olds and 40-year-olds. 60-year-olds. Hallelujah. I believe that this word of God the eternal word of God can touch everybody equally. Amen, amen, amen. My time is up, hallelujah. The last point that I want to bring to you is this. Go to the next slide. Next slide, next slide. Isaiah 60 verse 11 and 13. You can go to the next slide. Isaiah 60 verse 11 and 13. The Bible says, The glory of Lebanon shall come to you, the cypress, the plain, and the pine, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make my feet glorious hallelujah the worship team can come forward it says i will make my place of my feet say glorious my final point to you is this god's intention god's plan will be met with no opposition instead the magnificent things of lebanon will come to zion to adorn it hallelujah god is making a promise to prophet Isaiah that God's intention about you, God's intention about you, God's plan about you will be met with no opposition. Say this with me, no opposition. Say this louder, no opposition. Say this with me, God's intention will be met with no opposition. Instead, the magnificent things of Lebanon will come to Zion to adorn it. May God bless you with these words. Hallelujah.